Hello, 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 guys. Welcome to the Kange household of faith again today. You are welcome. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing Good well. Evening. It is another day in the presence of God. Yes. And we are expectant. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining us. It's a beautiful day in the glory. In the glory. Hallelujah. Pastor Pony, are you doing well? Yes, sir, I am. You, you are. I am doing wonderfully well. Wonderfully well. So every time I say it's wonderfully well, know. I just travel to Pastor James' country. <laughs> Hallelujah. The wonderfulness of Jesus. That's right. <laughs> it's an amazing woman of God. Yeah. Powerful teacher, powerful leader. Yes, yes, yes. Amazing. There are no two Pastor James. Ancient well. Yeah. God so is good. We thank God for his faithfulness. Welcome, <laughs> Minister Maka. Welcome. God bless you. Good to see you. Hi, Kiana. Hallelujah. Hello, Kiana. How are you? Jelisa, Jelisa, Jelisa. Missed you on the past event. What happened? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We had glory. so much fun on the one day retreat. It was mm, good. Mm, mm. Listen, guys, I don't know how many of you have heard the reports about the, the, the retreat. It was a blast. It was. It was. It was phenomenal. My God. And and people are coming in on the next retreat. And that's in August. Mm -hmm. They are coming with results. Yes. Amen. So August August event is results oriented, and um, we are looking forward to it. We are looking forward to it. It's going to be wonderful. So go to work so you can come with your own testimonial mm -hmm. of what God has done and how you've been able to put into practice the things you learned. And don't stay away because you don't have results now. Don't self-sabotage. Get to work. You have plenty of time until August. Actually, we will be working with you on how to obtain results. So you want to come. We will be talking about the mindset of success. I think that's what it is. Success mindset. So we will be talking about that. So, okay. yay. It would be great. It would be great. It would be great. It would be great. Thank you, Jalisa. Welcome, 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 Minister Diana. As one, you know one of the greatest secrets of success? Yes, sir. In fact, this secret holds many other secrets. Today I'm going to give that secret free of charge. Nice. Free of charge. I'm ready. You're ready to hear it? Yes. I mean, I can give it to you now without the microphones. <laughs> without a microphone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome Zoom family. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Zoom family. So good to have you guys on. Hey, Doc. Welcome. Hi, Minister Laurie. Do you want to hear it? Of course I do. In fact, I, I seriously believe that without this particular step, no other step matters. Okay. And this one has to do with the principle of the first. If you don't jump out of the boat, forget it, you will never walk on water. Right. I mean, we're not talking about the boat that's by the, by the seaside. That you, <laughs> you, you walk on sand. <laughs> we are not talking about walking on sand. You're talking about the one that is in the middle of the water. Yes. And, 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 you know, as we talk about this, much of what we'll be talking about today has to do with this line of conversation. You know? Okay. So, get ready. <laughs> get ready. All right, Minister Maka, I'm waiting for you. Welcome, Minister Micah Stevens. Hello, Mr. Freddy. Never a dull moment. Welcome. Hope you are doing well. Good evening, praise Mr. Freddy. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Welcome, Minister Tolu. So, Pastor Pauline, do you know that if you never take the first step, forget about all other steps? That's right. That's why it's called the first step. <laughs> the first step is the it's most the important first. step. It's the first step. If you kill the first step, forget it. You might as well go eat chicken. There are no other steps. And if you don't open your mouth to eat chicken, you will never digest chicken. The, my point is, if you don't take the first step, forget about all other steps. You can be dipped into all kinds of, of teachings and all kinds of 
success baptisms, but it will never <laughs> happen because you refuse to take the Did first you step. Success baptisms. Yeah. 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 I know one of the things that God was talking to us a few years back, not, not days, it's been years since God was talking to us about this, about the, the, the power of execution. Mm. You know, if, oh if, my you, God. if you look at yourself in the mirror and you walk away being a forgetful hearer and not a doer of the work, you will not be able to obtain. So God has been teaching us about execution the power of execution if you have poor execution skills mm. then it doesn't matter how much of the word you hear it doesn't matter how many motivational speakers you listen to how many um, um personal development seminars you attend it doesn't matter how many coaches you have if you do not execute the things you are learning mm -hmm. it doesn't change a thing you have so, to be a doer of the work, not just a hearer. So you're saying you can wear a wedding gown and walk down the aisle. If you never say yes, you're not married. You're not married. So there is this thing of participation. Yes. Whenever yes. someone has to move from a lifeless zone to a life zone. Right. Hmm. Child of God, I seriously believe that God is already speaking to us. I'm yeah. telling you that God is already speaking to us because this is right down our alley right. today. It's not it, it, enough. It's not enough for you to just sit in church and scream, "I receive, Amen, Hallelujah." My portion too. I hyperlink. If you do all of that, and it doesn't matter how much anointing oil is poured on your head, and how many times the pastors lay hands on you and prophesy and spit over you, and all of the night, yet if you do not execute, it's not happening. Wow, amazing. So you're saying if you have a bank account. And there is money in it. You never go to the bank. You will never cash in. You never cash in. I mean, and, we and know you that can go it, to the it, bank it, and stand outside and cry. I, I want my money. <laughs> <laughs> and even now that you can do transactions online, if you do not log into your account you to make the withdrawal, you will still not access the money, even though you have it. Ha! Huh. Hi, Pastor Peggy. God Welcome, bless you, woman Pennsylvania, of God. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Hi, clean hearts. Welcome. Hallelujah. So for everyone in the Pennsylvania area, it doesn't matter what corner you're found, you need to find yourself over at Song of Joy. Yes. The yes, joy yes. of God is overflowing in that <laughs> house. Okay. So you need to find Song yourself over joy. there. Yeah. You need to find yourself over amen, there. Amen, amen, But Welcome, God is faithful. First lady of four. Yes, he is. God is faithful. Hi, Pastor Sally. Love you, woman of God. Welcome. Yes, he is. He's a faithful God. And I, I love the simplicity uh, with which the, the, the teachings were going forth when you were talking about the paradigm branding and we're able to look into the different paradigms, bringing everybody to a place where you, we could face ourselves mm. as individuals. Face yourself and ask yourself, what is my thought process when it comes to money? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What is my thought process when it comes to relationships? Mm -hmm. What do I think when I hear the word success? Mm -hmm. What do I think? You know, so those different things. And some of us had, you, you had an exercise in which we had to write down what comes to mind when you hear money. And mm. people had different things written down. <laughs> Money doesn't grow on trees. You have to work, work hard for it. Um, it's the root of all evil. There were all kinds of, you know. But you, we were brought into a place where we had to face our thought process, face our paradigms, the things that have shaped our lives up to now. And by the time the seminar was over, I want to believe everyone came to a place where they were able to analyze their belief systems, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. their cultural background, the different things that make up who they have become. Mm -hmm. And it gave us an opportunity to rewrite our story, if I should say it that way. Mm -hmm. Because we realize that as long as we still have breath in our nostrils, we can begin again. And that is a blessing of grace. Amen. Say that again. Say that again. As long as we still have breath in our nostrils, we can begin again. And that's a blessing of grace. Say that again. <laughs> as long as you still have breath in your nostrils you can begin again and that is the blessing of grace 
Yeah. So, child of God, I invite you to reinvite your, to reinvent yourself right about now. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's right it. Reinventing yourself. Now. Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Hello, Sally. Pastor Sally. So, Pastor Sally just says she will reinvent herself. She's coming for dress classes. <laughs> Let me see. Coming for that dress. Oh, coming, coming for, for that, that dress, dress with her mask on. Ah, that's so funny. You don't need a mask to come, Pastor Sally. <laughs> you are a blessing to my life. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. By the way, Pastor Sally has a clothing line. She does African outfits for anyone who is interested. Reach out to Pastor Sally Mansari. <laughs> Welcome, Minister Robin Gale. Welcome, Pastor Eunice. Welcome, guys. Welcome, 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 hallelujah, welcome. Hallelujah. We are serving a faithful God, and today is no exception. <laughs> God is doing wonderful yes. things. Hallelujah. God Thank is you, doing Lord. wonderful things. Wonderful things. Oh, Rabbi, We're in a season of completion. <laughs> Robert says, I'm coming too. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. He's coming too for that dress. <laughs> <laughs> With his mask on, I guess so. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. All right. Welcome, um, Minister Solange. Pastor Sally, Good someone is again. asking for information on how to contact you. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, good. So you guys can have conversation up there about <laughs> Minister the Maka line. is asking for your number, Pastor yes. Sally. Okay. Hello, Pilumi. God bless you. Welcome. So, so, so. We thank you, Lord. Getting ready for the word? Yes, sir. I think we were already in the word. But, I know. Yeah. And, and, and seriously, I, I, I believe that that's the trend God is taking oh, us Rabbi, through you. today. You know, and so we'll be talking about that. Wonder Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for thank your you wonders. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, we exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No one like you, thank Father. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No one like you. No one like you. No one like you. Let your name be magnified. You are worthy, God. Precious, 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 precious are you, Lord God. Precious are your words to us. And even as we gather tonight, O God, may your will be done. Yes, God. Hallelujah. May your will be done. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We honor you, God. Thank you, Father. We honor you, God. Thank you, Father. In everything within us. Thank you, Father. We honor you, God. Thank you, Father. In you we live and move and have our being. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank Kanda la masse kenderia bayana la bosa. Be exalted. Hallelujah. Be exalted. Hallelujah. I love your presence. Thank you, Father. I love your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I love your presence. You know, Pastor Pauline, in the Word of God, we find oh Jesus we worship
So we are we are t we are going tonight. I am so grateful for how God's presence rushes in into every broadcast and each time it's different you you can never duplicate an atmosphere each time it's different there's something unique with every session there's something unique with every broadcast there's something unique with every opportunity that we have and that we we give god to move in our hearts in our lives in our midst in our homes sometimes we don't have the fullness of what he intends to do he will give us glimpses here and there but as we open ourselves up to the move of the spirit as we open ourselves up to the fullness of who he is and we choose to be intentionally vulnerable before his very presence then we know that we are scheduled for an encounter in one moment we our hearts can be forever opened and changed because as we behold the glory of God as in a glass, as in a mirror. Come on. We are being transformed. We are being metamorphosed into the very image of that which mm. we are beholding. Moving from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. I am not sure with what mind frame you came into the service tonight. I hope you understand that this is a service. I am not sure with what mind frame you, you came into the service tonight, but I want you to position yourself or reposition yourself. There is such a presence. That's right, Pastor Sally. There's such a presence. The presence of the, of the Lord is very tangible, even tonight. And I want you to just be aware. Just be aware that you are sitting or standing in the presence of a holy God tonight. And when you take that posture where you're saying, Father, here am I. Yours I am and yours I want to be. Do with me whatever you please. I'm open for you to come into my heart. I'm, I give you access to rebuke me, to change me, to transform me, enlighten the eyes of my understanding. Have your way in my life all the way. There are no secret cows. There are no hidden closets. There are no forbidden zones. I open myself up to you totally because I have made you Lord of my life, the entirety of my life. I have given my life to you and I have taken on your life. So have your way. There's fullness of joy in your presence. There is life in your presence. Expressions of your love, revelations of your power and might. And we know that we can bring a love song offering into the presence of our King. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. Ancient of days, Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning, you are the end. You are the light of our salvation. Our buckler, our shield. The creator of the heavens and the earth. The master of the universe. And you are our dad. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Because you first loved us. 
and we can only love you with the love that you shed abroad in our hearts Give by the Holy Ghost. Grateful for your love. A little sound, your majesty. Thank you, Father. Be exalted. Be exalted. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. There's a recharging and a refueling that God is doing tonight. For those of you who have felt a sense of weariness, like you're burnt out, like you're exhausted, you're overwhelmed. There's a refueling and a recharging tonight. Ah, nara brosh ko talabasaya. Ini ribo samara la brosh karara bakasa. Me kandali ama yandi li brosh ko talabakasa pato. Ini riya ba yana la brosh oto. You are in that place where you don't even have the energy to pray and all you can say is help Lord. And even that is a prayer and the Father hears. And even tonight there's a renewal of your strength. Oh, Rabbi, Seke. the Bible says when Jesus was in Gethsemane, when he prayed until his sweat was like great drops of blood, the Bible says that the angels came and ministered unto him. I see God doing that tonight, a recharging and a refueling. Yes. For some of you who have been in this intense battle and it feels like it's been going on for so long, you're mentally exhausted, you're physically drained, you have a sense of being overwhelmed. Even tonight, this broadcast is for you. There's a refueling and a recharging in the name of Jesus. Because you are not alone. Angels have been given to you as ministering spirits. They are meant to minister unto us who are the heirs of salvation. Yes. Thank you, Father. He makes them wind, you know. <laughs> so they are right there where you are. There is no distance in the spirit. Thank you, Father, for a recharging, for a refueling even now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Pastor Pauline, yes, in sir. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Let me start reading from verse 1. Okay. Okay. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. What a way of studying a sentence. Mm -hmm. The mother of Jesus was at a wedding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith, unto him they have no wine 
So, let's look at it. The mother of Jesus said to him, mm -hmm. they have no clothes. They have, <laughs> they have no shoes. Mm -hmm. They don't have a house. Mm -hmm. They don't have wine. So Jesus now says, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, <laughs> Whatever he saith unto you, do it. See that? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us digest your word today. <coughs> cause us to see and cause us to triumph in Jesus name Amen. Amen so Pastor Pauline the mother said whatever right whatsoever he saith unto you do it that's it that particular statement should have had its own verse <laughs> whatsoever he saith unto you do, do it so tonight we want to talk about the connection between instructions and faith mm. instructions and faith earlier on today god said something to me he said it is not about me giving you because i've already given you it is about you acquiring what i have already given it is about you taking what I have already given you. Mm -hmm. It's about you receiving mm -hmm. what I have already given you. So here we are. I, I mean, I remember when God said that to me, I said, oh, wow. That is, hmm, that makes sense. That really, really makes sense. It makes sense. Because he's saying to me, if I have already given you, then it has nothing to do with me giving you. Because it's been given. Right. So, just like Jesus was speaking with the disciples and said, Unto you it is given to understand the mm. mysteries of the kingdom. Yes. This has already been given to you. But now, would you position yourself to get the mysteries of the kingdom? You know, Pastor Peter, it's easy. Oh, my goodness. Something just hit me. Yes, ma'am. You know, when I we... I like things that hit me. When we, <laughs> Go ahead. When we minister the baptism of the Holy Ghost to people... We, we, we understand the concept of receiving. Yes. It's easier for us to talk about the receiving when it comes to that. It just hit me in a question. Why don't you translate that to everything else? Mm, come on. Because if we, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, right? Mm -hmm. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So he has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The same way that in Acts chapter 1, he was telling the, the disciples to tarry, right? Yes. He said they should wait for the promise, verse 4. They should wait for the promise of the Father. And that John truly baptized with water, but they would be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days after that. Mm-hmm. And he said they will receive power mm -hmm. when the Holy Ghost comes. Yes. In Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came and they did, indeed were baptized with the Holy Ghost and they spoke with uh, tongues as evidence. They definitely received the power, paid the promise. Mm -hmm. Verse 45, I think. Let me see. Verse 38 of Acts chapter 2. Then Peter said unto them, that is when after they had preached, they, they had received the Holy Ghost, there was the evidence and the people were wondering what was going on. And Peter began to preach to them and they said, what shall we do to be saved? And he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost because that Holy Ghost had already come right. in chapter two. So now he's talking about them receiving. Yes. Not praying for it. No. But receiving. 
For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, mm -hmm. even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Yes. So from that verse of scripture, we are told that the Holy Spirit has already been given, even to yes. the people who are not yet born again. Come on. So when they come into this new life in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. then they have simply positioned themselves to receive. Yes. That's the reason why when we are ministering to someone for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we don't say pray for the Holy Spirit to come. We say receive because he's been given. Mm -hmm. And you see that same language throughout the word of God. If we look at chapter 8 of Acts, of the book of Acts, the Bible says after Samaria had received the gospel, yes. when the apostles heard that Samaria had received the gospel, they sent unto them, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. All right. They didn't pray to God so he can give them the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. because he had been given. It had, he had been given in chapter 2. Yes. They prayed for the people that they might receive. All right. So it was about their posture in acquiring, their posture in receiving. Yes. So you keep hearing them use that same language throughout. If we read Acts chapter 19, the same thing. The Bible says Paul was passing through the upper coast of, of, of Ephesus. He saw a group of disciples and he asked them, have, have you received, received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Mm -hmm. Have you received? And, and, and the notion that the question is asked in terms of the duration mm -hmm. of their having received mm -hmm. the word of God. And, and, and that says you could have received him any time. Right. Uh, but clearly you haven't received him because... You never considered it. Right. Or you did not you know were not aware. It. Yes. Because like in Acts chapter 19, the people said, we didn't know that there was any Holy Ghost. But they had received Jesus. Yes. They were born again. But they didn't know about the Holy Ghost. No. And, and, and Pastor Pauline, this conversation we are having tonight, I really pray that God is going to help us with it. Because the question is, have you received since you believed? Mm -hmm. But the word of God says, believing, we, we receive. receive. But have you received since, since you believed? believed? So believing in what? So this is the point. You started out with, with Ephesians chapter 1. Mm -hmm. From Ephesians chapter 1, we see that everything that pertains to life and godliness has been given to yes. us. Right? And we ought to have received from the time we believe. Yes. If we are believers, then we should be receivers. Oh, that's good. If you are a believer, you should be a receiver. I'm a believer, and therefore I'm a receiver. I'm a receiver. So every time a child of God says, I don't know how this is going to happen. Someone was asking me a question today. They said, do you think we are going to do this by this time? I said, all things are possible to the one who believes. So I'm not sure what you're asking me. What are you asking me? If all things are possible to the one who believes, and you're asking me if we are going to do this by this time, the unbelief is not on me. The unbelief is on you who's asking the question. Because it is your unbelief that is trying to find out if it has a cushion or support. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. See, see what I mean? Yes, sir. And it is the absence of the word of God, the word of faith, the word of confidence that mm. makes a person ask if the deadline will be met. It's like the, the serpent asking Eve, did God really say? Yeah. Yeah. And possibly that sometimes those questions come disguised in a sense of responsibility right i'm asking because but, i want to be responsible i want to be sure about what i'm doing but pastor Pauline, you know something 
Okay. If God says, believe me for a car, mm -hmm. where is our sense of responsibility? <laughs> Good question. The burden of responsibility is believing. That's it. That's it. And believing, we, we receive. receive. Hence, have you received, received since, since you, you believe. believed? So it's not enough to say, I believe. We know that you believe because you have received. Ooh. Receiving is an instant reaction to believing. Oh, no, you have to say that one again. Okay. You ready? Yes. Receiving is an instant reaction to believing. So the moment someone comes into believing, they receive. Okay, mm -hmm. fine, fine. Let's not make it complicated. When did you receive Jesus? When you believed in him. Right? Mm -hmm. When did you receive the Holy Ghost? When you believed in him. Mm -hmm. When you believed, you went for it. Mm -hmm. So someone who believes in something must go for it. It is in you going for it. Because that's what is called receiving. Right? That's it. So if you come to me and say, um, did God say that X, Y, Z? Okay. It is not faith that is asking me. Mm. No, it's not. No. The devil is a liar. It is not faith that it's is asking me the question. Asking. It is the same serpent in the garden yes. that is asking me the question. Yes. Now, child of God, I know, I know this could stir up a lot of emotions tonight. The pastor just called me a serpent. Okay, I didn't call you a serpent. <laughs> I, I'm talking about that which is speaking through you. Yes. And you, you have to be very discerning of attacks bombardments oh, yes. fiery darts yes yes filled with unbelief right yes come in your way that's why scripture talks about a shield of faith yes to quench those fiery darts of the right. wicked one yes we have to have yes. our shield yes. in place and, and, it, and it's good you're mentioning that because i see this is why the presence of god is so intense today it's oh, good you're gosh, mentioning I that do you know what i'm saying it's good you mentioned no, that sir. the bible says you make sure that there is no what evil, evil heart, heart of, of unbelief. unbelief right so 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 you may not be considering yourself as wicked or evil because maybe you know you're not doing some things that you know some other people are doing that are considered evil and wicked mm -hmm. but he's saying to you if there is unbelief it makes your heart your evil. heart has moved into wickedness oh father okay see. what does he say if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from and, their we, wicked and ways. turn from their wicked ways Right? Mm -hmm. Because if we are believing, then we are humble. Yeah. Yes. The test of faith is in humility. Oof. The goodness. test of faith is in humility. Test okay, Pastor Pauline, who tells you the thing that gets you to come into faith? God. God. How do you come into faith? By agreeing, by agreeing, right? Yes. When you agree, it means you subjected yourself to what he said. Yes. So the test of faith is really humility. Be it unto me according to your word. Yes. Moses was considered the meekest man. Look at the things he did. A man full of faith. Mm. Jesus moved in faith. But he will only do what his father says he should Bible do. The Bible says he humbled himself right yes. to the point of death, the yes. death of the cross. So, so, so we have to understand this, Pastor Pauline. And, and God is saying that to us tonight. If you are a believer, then you are a receiver. Yes. Or shall I say, if you are a believer, then you should, then you be, should be a receiver. A receiver. Because believers receive. That's why it hit me the way it did when he gave me, in that instant, he gave me the analogy of praying for someone to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because when, when, when you begin to minister mm. to them, you don't Jesus. say, let's Jesus. pray that the Holy Spirit will come. You say, we are praying for you so you can receive. Yeah. Because you are very sure he has already come. Yes. If we can just take that and put it in everything else. Now, let me go backwards. You know, 
let me take on this statement that you made wow. about the responsibility. Yeah. Okay. You know the mystery in that. It is, it is actually true. The unbeliever is the one who has assumed responsibility. Mm -hmm. The unbeliever assumes responsibility from God. The unbeliever takes it and makes it their business. Meanwhile, the person of faith hands it over. So if you want to really find out if you are a child of faith and oh if you are in faith, God. find out who you are processing within you to be the executioner. Oh, who you are processing within you to be the executioner. Hmm. Okay, Pastor Pauline. Hmm. You ready for this? Yes, sir. We know about the story of Abraham. Isaac, Jacob. In the story of Jacob, we find two women, Rachel and Leah. Mm -hmm. And these two women are in the life of Jacob because he is tricked into marrying one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. The one he's tricked into marrying gives birth no problems. The one he really loved was not giving birth. And Jacob was challenged. What kind of man are you? When are you going to give me a child? And the man goes, am I God who gives children? Now watch this. What does he do? The Bible says, and he entreated the, Lord. the Lord. So let's look at faith and unbelief. Faith attacks, uh, 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 forgive me. Unbelief attacks a person. Faith goes to God. We can pause there for a little bit, can we? we actually, we just did. Okay. It's, it's, like, it's as if we are driving a lorry. You know a lorry? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's... Unbelief attacks a person. Yes, unbelief attacks people. Uh, because unbelief is, is, is reverting the responsibility to execute on humans and on humanity. That's what unbelief is. Unbelief is... Is that conviction that there is someone somewhere. Pastor Pauline, if you are believing God for money, but you're talking to people, you're, you're not believing God. You're believing people for money. So your expectation is on people, not on God. People who believe in God talk to God. <laughs> people who believe that people would execute talk to people. They talk to people. Mm -hmm. They talk to people. So, so we must be in that place where we do not assume responsibility on things that only divinity can carry out. Oh. Hey, Father. If only divinity can do it, if I step out. only divinity can do it, I take my hands off. Oh, yes. Hands off. In so, the so, 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 Pastor Pauline, look at it right here. Look at it right here. This is it right here. Whatever he says unto you, do, do it. it. So, there is no doing until he has spoken. There is no doing until he has spoken. If he speaks, then you do. If he hasn't spoken, you do nothing. You don't do anything. You don't do anything. Mm. People who believe God talk to God. Yes. Yes. So this is, this right here is a thing. Pastor Pauline, if you buy oranges 
from Safeway, Giant, whatever the store is. And there is a problem with those oranges. You automatically think about the store. Of course. <laughs> because that's the origin and that's yeah. okay. That's okay. Now, if we are talking about things that God did, who should we be talking to? The source. The source. Father God. God. Yeah. Father God. Father God. I had an experience today, Pastor Pauline. I had an experience today. Yole. Hey. I, Welcome. I said something too. <laughs> <laughs> That's my person. Good. It's good to have you, Yolene. Welcome. Hi, Minister Lisa. Welcome. <laughs> Go ahead. I apologize. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> you saw your person. Yes. So, so Pastor Pony, let's look at someone who is in ministry. They say, they say, mm -hmm. God called them. And when they have a problem, they talk to the congregation. Ooh. <sighs> okay. Right? Mm hmm They say, what made me bring this up? Saul received instructions on what to do. What to do. Yes. When some things surfaced, he moved from the God who spoke to him to the people. The people. Lord have mercy. Oh, Rabbi. So, so God is saying something to us tonight. Because you... Oh. Can you hear this one? I'm ready. I'm waiting. <laughs> Faith responds to God. Mm -hmm. Faith is answerable to God. Unbelief responds to people unbelief reacts to what people have to say unbelief adheres to the concepts and principles right yes the culture of men but faith seeks god faith says things like if you can use anything lord you can use me Faith says, oh God, it is either you or it oh, is it you. Is you. That's it. Uh, I don't have any other option. It must be God. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. So, faith and unbelief. Whatever he says unto you, that should be the thing that you are doing. Okay, Joshua. Do you want to be successful? I tell you how to be successful. This book shall not depart. Shall not depart from your mouth. You will make sure that you observe to do. Mm -hmm. And the only way you will observe to do is to have your attention affixed on this book. Yes. Yes. That thou mayest prosper yes. in whatever you put your hands to do yes 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 amen right amen welcome woman of god glory and god sin god bless you Pastor. so 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 that is what god is saying to us yes. that's what he's saying to us mary said listen guys whatever he tells you i to. am his mom <laughs> i know I this know the guy secret. yes him my this guy, God. this guy, whatever he tells you holds the secret to the miracle. Yes. And so let me whatever. say, let me say the way God said it to me. This is how God said it to me. If there is an ear to listen, there are miracles to be had. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? You have to say it again. If there is an ear to listen, then there, there are, are miracles, miracles to, be, to had. be had. Because God has already done his part. The door to every miracle 
is the instruction, instruction you are given for that miracle the door to every miracle is the instruction thereof yes it is the instruction thereof so god is saying to us tonight if you are a listener and a doer then you shall also be a receiver i'll say that again yes. if you are a listener and, and a, a doer, doer then, then you, you are, are also a receiver, receiver. So I think you have to help us tonight on how to be listeners. Because sometimes we come, for example, you say <laughs> we're going for a prayer meeting and you walk in Rabandalabo, say telephone, Father, we thank you for the day, day. One prayer topic in Jesus' name, amen. Next prayer topic in Jesus' name, amen. The third in Jesus' name, amen. And we are done and we go home. Hallelujah. And we may not have heard him say anything. Mm -hmm. except for our prayer list that we came with mm -hmm. how how do we become good listeners because if you are saying there is no doing without having heard it means we have to be good listeners in order to hear the instruction before we can do in in in, in, in my relationship with people some of the things that always come up is something like okay where i was on a fast a three-day fast or a seven-day fast or a 21-day fast and then i'll say so what did god say and the person will say i didn't hear anything god didn't say anything and i'm thinking three days of fasting god didn't say anything is it that we're expecting him to speak in a particular way or is it that for those three days, God was just silent? All right, or is it that we don't recognize that even this is God speaking? So, so How so, does that play out? We, you need to help us with this listening business. So, Pastor Pauline, let's put it this way. Before we even talk about a listening issue, let's put it this way. If you say to me, go to the kitchen mm -hmm. and I and and there's a drink there for you mm -hmm. and then I pause and then I say hmm a drink okay is it pink is it red right mm -hmm. wow Let's look for the definition of the word drink. <laughs> drink. Wow. Let's meditate on the word drink. Okay. I'm sure you'll be sitting there and saying, you okay? Right. Are you sure I'm you're already all right? laughing at what is going on? Because you said to me, go to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about go to the kitchen, don't you get? Right. So in the case of our relationship with God, he says something to you, right? Mm -hmm. And then you begin to do all of this. Oh, no, let me meditate first. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, let me sow a seed first. Mm -hmm. Let me do this first. You are claiming to be super spiritual mm -hmm. when all you needed to do was what? Just go to the kitchen. Go to the kitchen. Did he really mean it? Was it a symbolic thing? Was it figurative? Wouldn't you find out on your way? <laughs> right? So we have hey, on many occasions, us, Lord. And, and I take myself out of that right in now the in the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. You want to be there? Go ahead, knock yourself out. No. But I take myself out. This is the there. point, Pastor Pauline. We all take ourselves out. I refuse to trivialize the instructions of God that evidently add the door to my expectations. In the name of Jesus, I refuse. When he you. says to you, go, mm -hmm. you should be on your way going. To the kitchen. Yeah. To the kitchen. And when I get over there and he says he kept a drink, I should not be wondering whether I should boil it first. 
I should freeze it first. Maybe I ought to keep it out in the sun. Maybe, maybe. If the man wanted to tell you that, he would have told you. He said, I kept you a drink. Drink it. So this is the thing. The point is not very much a listening problem, but a procrastinating problem and a doubt, doubt in to on, on, on a, a is doubt on top of doubt times doubt oh, Lord. multiplied by doubt and more unbelief and doubt hey, and fear and know. concern and, and the intention to want to understand. What do you have to understand with drink? Pastor Pauline, how many people will rather take a fast than lay hands on the sick? <laughs> I mean, you because they're looking at that case and they're saying, uh, hmm. but they will not tell you that Jesus said, Such go it out, baby. Exactly, but that's not what Jesus said. So when let did me he go say and fast he, first. He, that's not what he told you at the time, <laughs> right? Right, it is not like Jesus has never made that statement. But at what point, Pastor Pauline, this is where it gets interesting. At what point did you analyze that that scripture is meant for you? Because you analyze the situation with your eyes. You told yourself this is a tough one. Yes. This it, one go it only it by prayer. If it were a headache, you would have said, Oh yeah, let's pray. Pastor Pauline, do you know? May I say this? Yes, sir. May I say this? Child of God, you need to listen to me right about now. Mm. How is it that you believe in fasting more than you believe in the name of Jesus? Ooh. Okay. How is it that you believe? that it will be the seed you have sown that will get you out more than you believe in the name of jesus you prayed through now understand something child of god all of these are god's things yes the strategies of god but he has said i have lifted up my word above my name yeah. so if he says it in his word his name puts a seal on it yes oh that's good if he says it in his word his name puts a seal on it and so that's what he's saying to us how easily do 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 many people run to fasting and not to the name of jesus because fasting gives you a sense of responsibility i go. have done it now we, can, we actually right now we can close fasting gives you a false sense, sense. of accomplishment. accomplishment i fasted three days now i can do it oh that's the point that is the problem you think you are the one to do it so you so when you have teachings like fasting does not change god fasting changes you you are thinking mm -hmm. but the last time when i prayed hmm, i prayed and god moved i fasted and god moved mm -hmm. you cannot tell that is you nicely saying i rebuke that teaching i rebuke that thing you're saying i cannot believe you i cannot agree because you believe fasting is changing god god not realizing that the fast actually changes you and you're stuck in that tradition you're stuck in that philosophy god remains god whether you fast or you don't fast but fasting will help position you that's it to accept the godliness of god yeah Ooh, that's a good one Fasting will help position you to accept the godliness of God. Yeah. So when you are in that place of fasting, it positions you to hear him. Yes. Because the focus is for you to receive the instruction <laughs> that would lead you to the miracle. May I say something, Pastor Paul? I, I know you oh, said it positions you goodness. to hear God, but, but this is it. Oh. Fasting positions you to obey God. Yeah. Yeah. It positions you to obey God. In some instances, it positions you to hear him. In some instances, it positions you to come closer yeah. to him. In some instances, it positions you to let go. Exactly. And at the end of the day, you will be doing something 
in obedience to the thing that he has said to you. So, let's go back to that. <laughs> Believing, we receive. we receive. So, believers are receivers. Are receivers. Believers are, are receivers. receivers. Amen. So, if I would only believe, then I can get myself to receive. Yes. But then when the word of God says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? The word of God is saying, it is possible to be believing and not and receive. Not receive. Oh. God said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Right? Yes. Okay. When did, did, did Joshua win all of his battles? When God settled to be with him. But when did the manifestation come? When he went when on he to went do on what to do has been said. said. That's it. That's what God is saying to us. And uh, so, so first of all, in the word of God, right? In John chapter 11. So, that's fine. Let's go there. John 11. Thank you, Lord. Are you all getting this? Mr. Marcus says I'm running around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God can give you a million dollar promise, right? As far as God is concerned, the money has been released to you. But you will have to grow mm. to take it. Yes. Until you take it, it will be waiting for you. As for me, my promise my is with you. you. Right? Okay, so we are in John chapter 11. We know the story, Lazarus passed away and, and all of this. Mm -hmm. That's the story of John chapter 11. Okay, so now we are exactly over there. Verse 39. <laughs> first of all, first of all, Let's put some things in perspective from verse 33. Okay. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned. Ah. What was Jesus' point? It's like someone saying, Why are you without understanding? What is the crying for? Because if you could understand, you would be rejoicing instead. Because of what is about to happen. So is that why he wept? Because he well, was... the word of God says, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. And said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, Come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. There are some things in the word of God that God has to show you. God has to show you. Because it will be contradicting right here. That Jesus' reason for weeping is that Lazarus is gone. Right. It would not make sense right. because to Jesus, Lazarus is not He's gone. Sleeping. He He's sleeping. That. He, he already knows Lazarus is coming back. He yeah. knows this sickness is not unto death, right. but it is for the glory of God. Yes. So he will not be mourning or in sorrow of Lazarus' departure. Jesus was troubled by the unbelief of the people. So Jesus on several occasions would say, how long will I be with oh, you? Oh, Lord. Yeah. And Jesus would say, okay, how fine. Okay. When, I when I said this to you, did this not happen? When I said, put, how many baskets did we pick? Yeah. Then, then why are you thinking like this? Right. right. In other words, when you're dealing with me, do you have issues with, with duplicity, multiplication, provision? Is there ever a problem? 
So why are you thinking I'm saying take lest what we have is depleted? Why are you thinking like that? Because according to Jesus, there is no depleting of provision. If it is not there, we'll take a fish and get the coin out. Right. If it is not there, we'll get the ravens. That's right. Oh my God. If it is not Whoa. there, we'll call the quails to come. That's right. if, 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 if it is not, there is always oh, a Rabbi way. There is always a way. Can. If it is not there, we'll multiply it. We call for the light out of darkness. Yes. So there's nothing. So he said, he said, children, why are you without, without, understanding? without understanding? So this is Jesus. Jesus is looking at these people and saying, I just told you I'm the resurrection. You say, yeah, you know, in the last day. Is that what I'm talking to you about? <laughs> I am. I am right now. The resurrection. <laughs> Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he said, have I been with you all this time and you don't you know don't me? I have understanding. How long will I suffer you? How long will I be with you? I kept all year of little faith. And then he says, then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. Total, <laughs> totally misunderstanding what is going on. You know, in, in, in many cultural settings, what makes a funeral a funeral the devil is, a liar. is the extent to which people cry. So in some funerals, they actually hire professional groaners, mourners. professional <laughs> mourners. Because if you come for the funeral and just a handful of people are crying here and there sporadically, it's not really... It has not kicked in It yet. has not kicked in yet. When they leave the funeral and say, hey, that funeral was powerful. That person was loved. It's determined by how much of the crying happened. Mm. So people will hire professional mourners to do the crying so it can really show the extent to which that individual was loved. So I see the same thing in this setting where when they saw Jesus weep, the conclusion was, oh, how he loved him. Because it meant to them the crying was an indication that he was really, 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 really loved. So every now and then, if you have that mindset where you feel like, okay, if, if, if someone is going through something, you have to join them in the pity party to really show them that you care about them. You don't want to come and be the voice of faith that will say, this is not of God. Yeah. Get up from this. Right. You can get past this. You are not meant to stay in this situation. You don't want to come across insensitive. So you join them in the pity party. You join them in the morning. Because you want to present yourself as a good friend or a good sister or a good brother. That is unhealthy. But that comes from all of these different cultural mindsets, these different paradigms that we have acquired over the years. Yeah. There are people who find it very offensive when you are trying to encourage them and get them out of a, um, a depressed state. Mm -hmm. When you come to them and, and you're saying, but this is what the word of God says, they are actually angry with you. Because they want to see you say, well, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I understand. And, and then you come there and sit there and look sad and cry. You know, we, finding that place where you are able to pull somebody up out without sitting in the mud with them right. and staying there. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about you going down into the mud to pick someone up and you getting muddy in the process. Mm -hmm. That's a healthy process. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about you sitting in the mud with them mm -hmm. and staying in the mud with them just to show them that you love them. The devil is alive. That is messed up. Yeah. So it's the same mindset we see here with the people. They are saying, oh, how you loved him. Because they attributed his crying to him mourning that he's gone. That he's gone, but that would be like you said that would be contradictory because he knew he wasn't gone. That's right. why he came. Yeah. He told his disciples even before they could come that right. Lazarus was sleeping. Let's go wake him. Let's go wake him. So, so Pastor Pauline, it is rather intriguing that you would find someone who is totally not connected emotionally speaking with me. Mm -hmm. To a circumstance, and that's because they know something else. 
Yes, and that can be very annoying. That can to, be very annoying to the rest of the people. Right, who don't know that thing that that person knows. Right. Most of the time, I mean, we 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 do this all the time. When when something is happening, I will say, wait a minute, God knows something I don't know, and I need yeah. to hold on. Yeah. God knows something I don't, I, that I don't know. I need to hold, hold on. on. And so here, right here in this word, mm. Jesus says, "Where did you lay him?" And they said, "Oh yeah." And the Jews said, "Ah, how he loved him." Mm-hmm. And some of them said, "Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused this, caused that even this man should not have died?" Yeah, because you're saying that because you think it's over with that person. Right. Because if you didn't, if you didn't think that it was over with that person, you, you'll be saying something as you say, "Hold on, Jesus has come." <laughs> Do you see that? Mm, hold on, hold on, Jesus has come. Some, on, something's about to go something's down. About to happen. <laughs> I, I, you know, Pastor Pauline, that, Jesus is in the house. That is, that is supposed to be the atmosphere in church. Yes. So, so no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. We're in church. We're in church. Yes. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> we are about to engage in praise and worship and the there glory is, will there is, fall. There is no telling there what is, is no about telling. to happen right now. Come on. There is no telling. No, no telling. There's no telling. And then and la broche, miracles begin to happen yeah. left to right. You see, that expectation has to be there. When someone says, oh, such and such and such is sick. Oh, really? Hmm, interesting. Let's go to church. Upon Mount Zion. The shall be deliverance. The shall be deliverance. And the people of God <laughs> shall possess their possession. You have come on to Mount Zion. When we understand the power angels. of that corporate worship, Yay. the Bible says you have come <laughs> on to Mount Zion. It says you are in the company of innumerable angels. You are in the presence of just men come made on. perfect. Come Their on. blood is speaking better yes. things in that atmosphere. Yes. So you know that if you can just make it mm. to the service, mm. There is no telling. One thing is guaranteed. That circumstance must shift. It's like saying, if I can just open my Bible. Come on. I will find the scripture. <laughs> so that's, I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's. Oh. Glory, 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 glory. My God. Woo! Come on. Hallelujah. That someone is saying whatever they are saying because they have this whole thing all wrong. Yes. They yes. have it all wrong. The Bible says Jesus therefore again. Okay, look at that. Mm-hmm. Look at mm-hmm. that again. Mm-hmm. Jesus therefore again. So the scripture knows what the first groaning was. Yes. And he's saying again, right? Again. Because Jesus is saying, guys, he is not dead. Oh, Rebo Satarema Sakitala. Onda la baka sekiti. No shoot la basaya. E katala bro shoot la ba. And then he says, when the organ, when we need it. Yes, he says, therefore. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. Who cares? Roll away, away the, the stone. stone. Whatsoever he says unto you, do, do it. it. Even if now it stinketh. No one cares. So, Pastor Fahim, let's go back to what we said before. Unbelief is a logical it, it realm. reacts to people. It reacts to people. Faith the faith to God. will respond to God. That's it. My God, my God, my God, my God. Okay, so let's go here. The Bible says, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. He had been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not. What's the point? You see that? Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou would, shall I, shall I say Yes. That will receive life. Amen. Amen. 
If you believe, you will receive him again. If you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Did I not say that to you? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Mm. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe. That thou hast sent me. And when he had thus, uh, when he had, uh, when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. But Pauline, you know, when I, whenever I read this, the Holy Spirit has this thing where he takes me through possibilities. Okay. He says to me, he said, okay, let us consider that Jesus did not have that conversation with his father to the hearing of people. Mm -hmm. Because he had that conversation only because he wanted the people to know mm -hmm. that the father sent him. Right? right? So he says, let's consider that all of that never took place. Have we thought for a second what would have happened? I said, hmm, I can think about it. So, Hmm, interesting thought. Jesus could have just walked, went through the stone, got in Lazarus, and then they walked both both of them to just walk out. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 I like that. I'm sure that would have been scarier. <laughs> well, I don't know that the people were interested in in, in 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 because that is God at work. Look at how many times Jesus went through the wall. He did not need a door. Like, do you mm. want to see God? You really want to see God? Okay, watch and see. No wall. I will come for you. It doesn't matter where you are. No wall. That, that's what Jesus is literally saying to all of us. I will come for you. I will no, come to you. Open. It doesn't matter what the noise is. It doesn't matter how loud it is. I am coming to you. I am coming. No valley, no mountain. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to get you. And so Jesus makes us see the sovereignty of the Lord. And so when all of this happens, come forth, he says unto them, he first of all said unto them, roll away the stone. And then he said, lose him and let him go. I remember the first time I heard my pastor speak about this. She said, it wasn't just a physical losing. It was also a mental losing. Because the people already looked at him as one being dead. They had to lose him mentally. I said, come on, woman of God, talk to me. Because there are some miracles. We say, yeah, I have a miracle. But in our minds, we're saying, hmm, I don't know. Yeah. So is God really doing this? We, we analyze, 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 analyze. And that was the problem of the church when Paul got converted. Yes. They still wanted to keep him in prison. And Pastor Peter, we've seen that with, oh, with, with even people who have gone through um, diseases and they got healed. And because there is um, a reputation that is attached to a specific disease as something that has the potential of coming back. And this is common with cancer patients. You, you were diagnosed with cancer, God healed you, but you're living in the constant fear of it coming back because you've heard so many reports about other people. Statistics show that other people who have had cancer, they got into remission, the cancer returned. So you are living in that constant fear of the cancer returning. You, you unconsciously believe in the cancer's ability to return than you believe in God's permanent healing for your life. Mr. Pauline, there is an adherence almost as a natural inclination to evil than there is of good. Yeah. 
And that's because the platform from whence all human activities proceed is evil. The God of this world has so engineered people's behavior. Mm -hmm. So you would have to, in the Lord's words, come out from among them. Yes, yes. So we are of them that shut the door to unbelief. I was actually in that scripture today. You want to be the woman who borrowed vessels and her oil kept on going until she was told there wasn't any more oil? You've more got to vessels. shut the door. No more vessels. You've got to shut the door. Yeah. You have to shut the door. Do you want to raise the dead in a peculiar manner? You've got to shut the door. Do you want to come into uh, um, um, a level of excellence without critics having an influence on you? You've got to shut the door. You know, there is this thing where people say, it's okay, let them talk. I'm just, I'm just going to be here. I'm, I'm not going to say anything. No, it has nothing to do whether you say something or you don't say anything. You will have to shut the door. Yeah. You will have to shut the door. You will have to shut the door. Hallelujah. I want to read the scripture. Please do. I was in this scripture earlier on today, and you mentioned when you said, come here from among them. Yes. Um, Second Corinthians chapter 6. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to see where to start. I was in the whole Jesus. chapter, but I want to see where to start too. Paul is talking about how they carry themselves as workers mm -hmm. together with him, you know, in the vineyard of the Lord mm -hmm. and how they have been among the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, and I have, oh, let me read from verse one. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted yeah. and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Mm -hmm. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed mm -hmm. but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of god in much patience in afflictions in necessities in distresses in stripes in imprisonments in tumults in labors in watchings in fastings by pureness by knowledge by long suffering by kindness by the holy ghost by love unfeigned all of these things are things that happen in the life of the minister of the gospel and being able to carry yourself in such a way that the ministry is not blamed mm -hmm. in the midst of all of this. By the word of God, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, on. by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O ye Corinthians, uh, our mouth is open on, up unto you, our heart is enlarged. Ye have not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Mm. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Verse 14, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness mm -hmm. i know this scripture is mostly quoted when people want to talk to you about making sure that you marry in the lord which it is it applies to that mm -hmm. but it's not limited to that because it's just talking about relationships in general mm -hmm. be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 
And the, the, the focus that God, uh, the Spirit of God brought my attention to, he, he had me look at this from verse 14. He actually had me, you know, draw a line in my notebook and, and, and put these different things on the, on this, in these two categories. Mm -hmm. You know, one side it says the, the, the believer and the other side the unbeliever. Yeah. Be not unequally yoked together with the unbeliever. I say, what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? So you have righteousness on this side, unrighteousness on the other side. And what communion has light mm -hmm. with darkness? So the believer is righteousness. The believer is light. The unbeliever is unrighteousness. And the unbeliever is darkness. It goes on. And one concord hath Christ with Belial. The believer is Christ. Yes. It didn't say what concord has Jesus. It says has Christ, the anointed one. The anointed one, yes. As a believer, you are the anointed one. Mm -hmm. And the unbeliever is Belial. Okay. I know we don't like to hear those things, especially when it has our loved ones in the picture. But honestly, if your loved one is an unbeliever, they are Belial. You are Christ. You are the anointed one. They are anointed by darkness. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what it is. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what agreement had the temple of God with idols? So you are the temple of God and the unbeliever idols. is an idol. It's the temple of an idol. Mm -hmm. We have to have that clear understanding. And that's the basis for which God says, come from among them and be ye separate. So when you are standing in the seat, in, 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 if you are sitting in the seat of the scornful and you're getting counsel from the ungodly, you have to understand that you're getting counsel from the idols, you're getting counsel from unrighteousness, you're getting counsel from Belial, you're getting counsel from darkness. Right. And, and, and so, Pastor Pauline, this is God's point. This is God's point. All of these things that we have mentioned are the masters, the inventors of unbelief, yes. doubt, and fear. Yes. Yes. So God is literally saying to you and I, do you see what's making you not believe me? Right. It is not me. I cannot make you not, not believe, believe me. me it is something else yeah. that is staring you to be unbelieving irrespective of your believing nature because as a born again child of god your nature is the nature of faith that thing is you're, totally you're disregarding who gave birth to you oh and goodness. it is indoctrinating you yes to be a rebel and then the next time God is speaking to you from his word, you hear all those cousins speaking. Pastor Boyan, let's put it like this, right? There's a house. You live in that house. The house is supposed to be on a rock. Yes. Okay. While you are fellowshipping with the Lord Jesus in this house, Someone is speaking from outside. They are not a tenant. They have not been permitted to come in. They are not a guest. None of the above. And they are telling you how you should relate with your Lord and Savior. Whether you should trust his words or not trust his words. Mm. The greatest thing of darkness that we deal with every day as children of God, it is the staring up to not believe God. Oh my so you think you're born again. Mm -hmm. So you think you're born again. Mm -hmm. You think you have left my kingdom. Mm -hmm. mm. I will still remote control you. So that your confession that you are a child of God means nothing. That is so annoying. I shall remote control you from over here. I will still walk on you, but not at that office. 
I'll walk on you from my home. I'll walk on you. So the devil is a liar. He is a liar. The devil is a liar. So you must make sure that you do not fall because you are not ignorant of the devices of the yes. enemy. Yes. Amen. Believers receive. Yes. Receiving is not automatic. Yeah. Re receiving is the deliberate act of a child of God in honor and respect of what has been oh, given to them, to supplied by the perfect blood of Jesus. Yes. So when he says to me, be healed, he is saying, come into what I have said is yours. Amen. Be healed. Be, healed. be ye holy. Be, 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 be. Oh, so God. it is not so much about the giver. But much more about the receiver. Yes. So the prayer stands. Lord, oh Lord, cause me to grow. Grow until. me. Grow me until. Grow, grow me, me until. Me I've taken oh, possession oh, of oh, everything oh, that you have given unto hey, me. Grow oh, me, oh, my oh, God. Oh, grow oh, me. Oh, Grow me out of competition. Grow me out of laziness. Grow me out of sleeping. Grow me, grow me, Lord God, until I have possessed that which you possessed for me. Grow me, God. Grow me. Wow. Grow me. In the name of Jesus. Grow me until I possess the music CDs that are supposed to come out of me. Grow me until, oh God, I release all the prophetic words that are supposed to be coming out of me. Grow me, oh God, until I am able to release all the words of knowledge and, and words of wisdom. Grow me, grow me, Lord God, until I empty myself of that which you placed within me. Grow me, grow me, Lord God, grow me, grow me, grow me, in the name of Jesus, grow me, grow me, grow me, grow me, Lord God, grow me until my name is merciful, grow me until my name is goodness, grow me until my name is perfect, grow me until my name is world changer, grow me until, grow me until. Grow me until I am healed. Grow me until I am totally delivered. Grow me until I come into a place of maturity. Grow me, Lord God. Grow me, Lord God. That should be our prayer tonight, child of God. For believers receive. Grow me until I receive. Oh, hallelujah. Grow me, Lord God. Grow me. Grow me until my pastor and I don't live in the same house. Hey God, in oh the my name God. of Jesus. Grow me until my pastor and I don't live in the same room. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Grow me, Lord. Grow me, Jesus. Grow me, Lord. Grow me, Lord. Grow me, Lord. Grow me, Lord. There should be an intention within every child of God to empty themselves of the wealth, the riches, the provision that God put within them. It, 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 it should be there. It should be there. Yes. It should be there. It should be there. So even tonight, we are believing the Lord for believers receive. We are believing the Lord and we are receiving of the Lord the will to do everything he says we should do. My God, my God, my God. Pastor Pauline, do you know in the word of God, the Bible talks about the lepers and, and the Bible says while they were on their way to showing themselves to the priest, like Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest, right? They found out they were healed. Yes. Oh, child of God, may you find out on your way because Amen. it is only on your way that you can find out what God has done for you. It is only on your way. 
It is only on your way. It is only on your way. It is only on your way. It is only on your way. There are many of you who are listening to me right now. You're listening to this broadcast right now. And God has you holding the, the, the horns of the altar. And I, and I see you in a place of intercession. Know and understand, child of God, that you will not miss your reward. For the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Even as you're holding on those ram's horn and calling upon the name of the Lord and saying, Lord, grow me. And you're saying, Lord, shift me. And you're saying, Lord, God, remember me. Even this very day, Ramo Shatalebra Gadayada. May you come into that place where you receive of the Lord, where you receive of the Lord the things that He has freely given unto you in the name of Jesus. May you receive the protection of God. May you receive the provision of God. May Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Harabo Shande Reboko Sibarada. Area Naramo Kote Rimama Rabo Shanda. There are layers and layers and layers of discovery. There are layers of discovery that you're yet to come into. Because as you move from one layer, then the other one opens up, and then the other one opens up. Child of God, do not remain stranded. Do not remain stuck. Begin to make strides. Begin to move right now in the name of Jesus. In the Roka Shatalabra. Begin to move in the direction of that which God has called you to do. In the name of Jesus. Move in the direction. Move. Munamanibamandokopatinalamasota. Take note of the instructions and move in that direction. For even as you move, you will discover him. You will discover the Lord your God. You will see him on the path. You will find the fullness of the promise unfold itself as you take strides as you go step by step and step by step you will see the Lord my God just like he said did I not say to you that if you would believe you would see the glory of God did I not say that to you so we, 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 we intentionally Come away from unbelief. We intentionally make up our minds to jump into the instructions of God without holding back. Just like 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 the, the, the spirit of the living God spoke to, to Peter. He says, when the strangers come, follow them. Hold not holding back. So we decide that we will not hold back. We will not hold back. We will not doubt. We will not doubt. We will keep going until the Lord shows up. Until we see that which he promised us. And we will wait. We will wait until we see it. In the name of Jesus. For the Lord God, he is Lord. 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 Lord, Lord. And besides him, there is none other. And besides him, there is none other. He is Jehovah El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is Jehovah Jehovah Shalom. He is Jehovah Rekaba Sota Labra. Mezamimunda Razami Kandalabra. In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. E Karabo Shandara Brakasinere. E Koriamo Kosandaraba. Even tonight we can never vindel Kosa. We take hold of the Raneva Vindala Koso. Of the Honda Rasha Taka Parabo Darababa. Of the horns of the altar. And we cry out to Jesus. E Rabo Shaka. We are taking what is ours. We are taking what is ours. And the enemy that has been released. The enemy that is going behind you to make sure that he frustrates matters that concern you. Even tonight will we'll declare the word of the Lord. For it is God who causes diviners to be mad. We release a light of 
Jesus God, like be, like be, like be, like be, in the name of Jesus, like be, in the name of Jesus, be exalted, O oh God, be exalted, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, and I, the vision is of someone that was actually watching the broadcast. Yes. And they they received they, they, they received a phone call that is suggesting they have a loved one in a medical emergency. And they had to log off to attend to that medical emergency. And I I saw the continuation of the vision and it's like this is a hospital setting and the person is being wheeled in on the uh, on a, a, a stretcher right now we take authority over the spirit of death in the name of jesus i rebuke you satan i come against you spirit of infirmity yes. loose your hold from this come man on. of god in the name of jesus Amen. loose your hold from this man of god right come now on. in the name of jesus we mm. speak healing we speak wholeness in the name of jesus we rebuke death we say he shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord in this land of the living in the name of Jesus Amen. light be light be yes light be in, in the, the name, name of, of Jesus Rosso Talamagada Labrasse Ribrondo Lobokosh Cabada Labasse Kederia Bayanda Macatalamon de Lebeke Sierra Rabosha Rabondo Le Yabayada Labros Conda Labagaze Ketelebros Contaraba Enda Labos Cabada Labasa Eh Jehovah disappoints the devices of the crafty. Even now, in the name of Jesus, the hands shall not perform their enterprises in the name of Jesus. Libra Cas Condolo Bocos Caga. Only the counsel of the Lord stands. Only the counsel of the Lord stands in the name of Jesus. Healing and wholeness now in Jesus' mighty name. And we release the healing power of God over everyone that is experiencing sick, symptoms of sickness. Any kind of symptom of sickness, yes. we speak healing over you right now. Receive, receive, yes. receive in the name of Jesus. Yes. For Jesus already did release you from sickness he paid the perfect price he paid the ultimate price he took stripes on his back so you can have healing and health so receive your healing even now be healed in jesus mighty name thank you father there's someone who's going to be experiencing a a reversal there is a situation that concerns you and finances and i see accusation accusation but the lord is turning around this situation he's turning it around and you shall be vindicated in this matter in the name of jesus so even now we speak clarity May everything that concerns you receive the light of God right now in yes. the name of Jesus. Amen. May the victory of God be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Overturn, overturn, yes. overturn. Amen. Overturn. overturn. Overturn in the name of Jesus. Overturn, Overturn. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that yes. overcometh the world. Even our faith. Thank you, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a wonderful time spending Thank you, Jesus. this glorious times with you, you in Jesus. the presence of God. We are excited that God has you on his schedule. God has you on his schedule. Thank you, God has you on his schedule. This is one episode if you will that you have to listen to over and over and over and over again 
for he makes all things beautiful in his time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited. The catapult is coming. Yeah. With speed. Get yourselves ready. Guys, I will be meeting you at the catapult. It will be amazing. We have a session on Saturday. Wow. You have to come. You have to come. Bring your brothers. Bring your, your friends. You know, we will be having conversation. The catapult will be very powerful this year. And for some people, you know, it will be their 21st day, you know, um, um, because a lot of people are on a 21 day program for results. Mm -hmm. So it will be happening that weekend. It will be wonderful. So we are looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. God is gracious. God is gracious. So he'll be meeting us right there at the retreat site in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah, so the catapult, for those of you who don't know, is our annual conference. It begins on April the 9th to the 11th. And it's going to be in Luray, Virginia. So we are hoping to see you there. We're going to have in-person services. We'll respect all protocols that are necessary. We will have in-person services and then we will also have the virtual option. Mm -hmm. Our desire is that if you are in the DMV area, you don't even have to be in the DMV area. You can fly in. How about that? Mm -hmm. well, our desire is that you come in person. But if you absolutely cannot make it in person, then we have the virtual option. So Friday night, Saturday night, we will be on Facebook Live. Saturday during the day, we have a shot-in session, a separate session for the women and a separate one for the men. So the shot-in for the men will be with Pastor Peter, and the shot-in for the women will be with me on Saturday the 10th of April from 9 o'clock in the morning. You have to be registered to have access to the Zoom link for the shot-in. The conference is totally free. You do not have to pay anything for the conference. But we need for you to register because we will follow your email to send you the Zoom link for the shot in session. Please make sure you register. The link is posted. Just go to the link and register for the Catapult 2021. We look forward to seeing you there. We are excited about this conference. There are so many things God is already saying that He is going to be doing in the lives of His people. We know that we will be launched in a specific targeted direction for maximum impact. So we are looking forward to it. Those of you who were there for the Catapult 2020, you can testify. Those who were there for Catapult 2019, you can testify. And some people have been doing um, videos, Facebook Live videos, talking about their experience in the previous Catapults and what they are expecting for this one. Please do not miss. It shall be lit. <laughs> Pastor Nelly says lituation. Okay. Do not miss the catapult 2021. The t-shirts are here. So please, when you are registering, you also see a form that talks about the t-shirts. It will show you the different t-shirts that are available for you to place your order and choose your size and your color and all that good stuff. If you are interested in baptism, there will also be a, a form that will give you access to that you fill the form if you would love to be baptized because we will have baptism during the catapult 2021 we are looking forward to what god has in store for us with so much excitement we love you all and we will see you on thursday
I declare that you are growing me even now so that I may receive the things and hold on to and manage and be a good steward of those things that you have for me. The man of God said today that once you believe that thing has been released, God has said it and he has released it. Now it's for you to position yourself to grow, to be able to hold those things and manage and steward those things. Take out your offerings. You can yes, um, give your offerings via Zelle or Cash App. Our number is 301-900-9102. Again, that number is 301-900-9102. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to also encourage you. Well, pray for the offerings first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to sow upon this word. We raise up an altar before you tonight, Abba, and we declare that we choose to believe your word. We choose to receive your word and walk in the full manifestations of that which you have put within us. May we indeed apprehend that which we have been apprehended for, O oh God. We ask that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, O oh God. May we walk in the fullness of of that which you've put within us. We are expecting miracles, signs and wonders. We are expecting healing. We are expecting growth. We are expecting development. We are expecting a shift in every area of our lives. And so we lay the seat down at your feet, Lord Jesus, declaring that we believe and so we receive. So we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I want to throw a challenge to you. The man of God said that this message is one of the messages that you have to faith cometh by hearing we have a 21 day challenge those yes. who attended the total uh the day doctor a day with dr peter conge brand in your paradigm i want to throw a 21 day challenge to you to listen to this message every day for 21 days and stand on the word of god concerning you and i believe man and woman of god child of god you will see the manifestation of those things concerning you. Amen. 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 And also, we have the catapult. Woohoo! I am excited. It is only a few days away. So, please, if you have not yet registered, please, the registration is in the comment section. I want you to go and register now. Register, call your cousin, call your sister. It's free. It's free 99. <laughs> Free 99. Come. Be expected. God has done miraculous things through his servant, who is the spearhead of this movement, Dr. Pauline Conge. Come and be a beneficiary of that. Amen. 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 And that's it for announcements, guys. We love you guys. Thank you. For we joining look forward us. to seeing you on Thursday. Thank you. Zoom family, we love you. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you on Thursday.